Welcome back, Sierra Vista Baptist Church and everyone else. We are going to start something new. We are going to go to James, the book of James, and we're going to begin a study in James. Now, I love James. James is practical. It is encouraging. It is really like the book of Proverbs for the New Testament. And James is a, um, a book that really encourages you to pursue Christ to live a life worthy of the gospel, to, um, to really live as a Christian, and to be whole in Christ. A little bit of background on James is that it was written somewhere between 40 and 50 AD, and it was written to Jewish house churches uh, who are Christians. Christians, uh, primarily that they were formerly Jews, became Christians, and now have house churches, and they are dispersed uh, throughout the area, and we're going to see that as we move forward. So, if you have James chapter 1, we'll look at two verses today. Very, um, very short. We're going to try to keep these short and sweet and really study them. So James chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Now, yesterday we did the Expositors League, and that was for teachers and preachers who are interested in learning how to exposit Scripture. And in it, Jesse Wood, the, the pastor of First Baptist, recommended a, um, a way of doing phrasing. And in phrasing, what you do is you get it by the phrase. So you could do something like make a phrase mark here at James. So James, a servant of, a servant of God, and you could probably cut it there, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you cut there. To the twelve tribes dispersed abroad greetings and I would put a mark between those and then verse 2 consider it a great joy I would mark that and break that and then whenever you experience various trials so let's start with our observations James calls himself a servant of God he marks himself as a servant of God. Now, if you know some Greek or you um, have something like Bible Hub or, or some online option, you can go and you can look at this passage and say, is this a servant or is it slave? What is, what is this? Um, and we know that James is the half-brother of Jesus. We know that James... Um, Become, has become a, a disciple of him. And a lot of readers will skip the opening part of a letter because maybe they don't think the information is important or for various other reasons. It's very important that we pay attention because this gives us clues as to what this is. So based off of this, we have James, a servant of God. You know how Paul, he likes to say of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have and of the Lord Jesus Christ here by James, pretty similar uh, lineup as some of the other letters we've studied. And who is it to? Well, it is to the 12 tribes, which would, of course, if you were Jewish, you would recognize he's talking to the Israelites, to Jews. Dispersed abroad or in the diaspora. And when the Jews were carted off to various countries when um, they were conquered in the Bab Babylonian captivity or whatever, they, they consider themselves to be in diaspora, to be dispersed. And that's what we see here. James is referring to Jewish Christians who are not living in the homeland, who are not living in Israel. And so that's his audience. And that's important to know that because when we can study, continue to study this passage, there's going to be a lot more to it. So they're dispersed abroad. And then he says, greetings. Now, if you look at Paul and you compare him to James, Paul tends to write a lot of extra things with his greetings, doesn't he? He'll say, greetings, grace and peace to you, and various other aspects, whereas in James, he's pretty short and dry, greetings. And what, um, what James is doing is he is writing a letter. It's not a, a theological book. He's not writing um, some other set of information. He's writing an actual letter 
to the 12 tribes dispersed abroad, and, and primarily Christians. And then he says in verse 2, Consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials. So we have a time whenever you experience the various trials. So let's start with this. Consider it a great joy. What is he meaning there? What is James considering? Um, great is that modifier, and we want to make sure we recognize that this is great joy. What does it mean to consider? Well, it means to ponder, to think upon, or to um, reflect. So consider it great joy whenever you experience various trials. And then next week we'll find out what he has in mind when he's saying this. But from this we have a, an imperative. See how it's in orange? I've already marked it as an imperative. It's a command. And so James is saying, you must do this. This is something that you should do. This is a, a command from me. Consider it joy when you experience trials, whenever you experience trials. Of course, we have brothers and sisters, which marks it as a letter to Christians. Um, in the original, in the Greek, it probably just says brothers, but when we have brothers and sisters here, the translators have taken the, the liberty to recognize that a lot of times these letters are to a mixed group. They're typically written to brothers and sisters. Um, really, it could be to the congregation. And so by saying brothers and sisters, they're just making sure you recognize this is not just to a men only um, but it's to a, a congregation. And so that's why we have to my brothers and sisters. So consider a great joy whenever you experience various trials. And this sets the tone for the rest of the book of James. James has set the tone here about having joy when you experience trials. And it would be wise if you wanted to really follow the, the train of thought here is to read this whole um, first maybe 11, 12 verses and see what James has in mind um, because he is really setting up this letter and we don't want to just take two verses and then stop. If I commanded you to, to have great joy when you face trials and I didn't give you a reason why, you would be probably perplexed, maybe discouraged. And so James doesn't do that. He is actually continuing his thought um, after this. And that's what we're going to look at next week. So We've observed it. We've done some interpretation here. We talked about dispersion. We talked about the 12 tribes. We talked about this being a letter. That's the format, the genre that we have. It really is reflective of a, um, a Hebrew type of thinking, um, James being Hebrew, being Israelite. And so he has a very um, proverbial way of presenting this stuff. And so he commands us to have to consider it a great joy. And so this week, I want us to consider why would James ask us to consider it great joy when we experience trials? What could be some possible reasons? And so we could outline a couple reasons here on the side. Uh, one, maybe it's great joy because we are fighting for the gospel or striving. Striving for the gospel. Maybe it's we consider it great joy because we have a, a future hope. Maybe we consider it great joy whenever we experience trials because God is faithful to bring us through. And so this is kind of what we do. And what, is it, what do you think he means by joy? Does that mean like when we um, are experiencing trials, we just smile and laugh and have a good time? Or does it mean that we have a, a joyful expectation? And this is kind of the process that you would follow when you begin to meditate on this passage. So think about James writing this letter. Why would he start this letter talking about trials, various trials. 
What are some trials that you experience in your life? What are the trials that these, um, these this dispersed 12 tribes, these house churches are experiencing right now? Well, they're suffering persecution. It's a time of persecution for them. They are being um, beaten, kicked out of families, and harassed, and every other means of, um, of martyrdom as well. And so we see that they are experiencing trials to a very intense degree. And so uh, James, right out the gate, engages with them. I mean, imagine getting a letter um, from a loved one while you're on a deployment and they don't even mention what's going on back home or they don't mention um, what you're going through. And they just talk about some random story they might have read. That's not what James is doing. James is jump, jumping directly into their situation and saying, hey, I heard that you guys are suffering right now. I know you guys are experiencing pain. Let me tell you, consider it great joy. So let's think about trials that, that we experience in our everyday life. You know, it could be anything from um, financial. Let's, let me write this here. Trials could be financial. It could be um, health. It could be trials um, not being able to sleep. And we can, we can kind of list out maybe trials in our lives. Trials maybe having um, a child that is rebelling or, or is exceptionally difficult. And when we think about these trials, we know that James is talking to the Israelites, the Hebrews, the, uh, the Christians, about specific trials that he knows that they are experiencing, mainly because persecution for their faith. And I would say that's the primary thrust, but we, we don't want to miss that he does say various trials. And so these various trials can also be temptations as he brings up later down the road or, or testings. So what are some things that are testing you to not live as a Christian? Well, financially, if you are financially struggling, you may be tempted to um, fudge on your taxes. You may be tempted to steal or test it. Or if your health is bad, you may be tempted to snap at your spouse or your, um, your husband or your wife or your kids. You may be tempted to treat other people poorly because your health is, is suffering. And these are all trials that we experience in our lives. And so when, when James is saying, consider it a great joy when we experience these trials, he's giving us essentially an antidote to our trials, to our sleeping, to our rebel children. So what can, what ways can we consider it joy when we um, experience financial difficulty? Well, we have to see, we have to consider, we have to use our minds to recognize what our trials are and what they are for. Well, we know that all the things that we go through in life is for the purpose of of making us more like Christ as Christians. This is what we, we consider. We see, we see Romans 8, 28, 29 really pushing that information to us, and we see that God has revealed that through these circumstances in life, it is to make us more like Christ, to make us trust and have more faith in God over time. So when we struggle with a financial crisis, we can either respond with faith or belief, or we can respond with unbelief or unfaith. We can either respond by trusting that God will provide and care for us, or we can respond with um, fear. We can respond with other things that are not um, being faithful. And so we can be joyful that we have the opportunity to grow. You know, we, um, we know about trees that they need some kind of resistance to make the tree grow healthy, to grow deep, to have good roots. And so a tree needs to have wind. It needs to be um, tested, essentially, through the elements in order for it to grow strong. And um, there was a, a thing in the biosphere several years back where they had grown trees inside this dome, and the trees got to a certain size, and they just began to fall over. 
because they didn't have to develop any roots because there was no wind in that in that biodome. And that's what we see in our lives is we have to experience testing, we have to experience trials in order for our faith to grow and to become stronger. So I hope this is encouraging to you. I hope that you can look at this passage and see how we are getting to the way that we are getting this. This is a great way to, to study your Bible. Um, maybe read a whole chapter of James and then come back and just center in on one verse and just really meditate on the verse, on the passage. What is it saying? Look at the grammar. Consider what it means by James to be a servant of God. And then you can pull out these application points. And so I would encourage you to do that on your own. Um, and then next week we'll be back for James chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. So God bless, take care, and I will see you next time.